Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're going to be learning of all about how to change the color of an object in an image in Photoshop, Photoshop CS2 here. And we're also going to look at colorizing black and white photos. So we're going to be learning some very cool techniques today. It's actually pretty easy. You just need to know what to do. So I'm going to kind of preface this by making it clear that there are many, many, many ways to change the color of an object in a photo in Photoshop. I'm going to show you my two personal favorite ways, at least the two personal favorite ways that I can think of right now. And uh, hopefully you'll learn a thing or two about it and you'll be well on your way to changing colors of all kinds of things in all kinds of different photos. So this first way here, we're going to utilize what are called adjustment layers here in Photoshop. And they can be found right over here at the bottom of your layers palette. You have this circle and it is split half black, half white. When you press that, you get this drop down menu of all these different options, solid color, gradient pattern, etc, etc, etc. These are all layers that when you apply this layer, you apply settings to this layer and it is affecting, I guess I should say, affecting the layers beneath it. It only affects the layers beneath it unless you use a clipping mask to mask it to a certain portion of layers and actually we are going to mask these off um, in just a minute and I'll show you how to do all that so if you don't understand what I'm saying hopefully it will come together in just a minute so we're going to come down here and we're going to use hue saturation to make our color changes I'm going to hit hue saturation and it pops this dialog box it's the hue saturation dialog box now I want to change the color of the flower in this photo so as I start to play with these sliders I'm going to focus on the color of the flower and ignore the color of the background because like I mentioned just a second ago we're gonna mask the background out so the only thing that's going to be changing color here is going to be our flower I'm take the hue slider and I'm gonna slide it to the right just a little I'm just gonna move it around until I find a color I kind of like uh, let's say that very vibrant pink and that's way too vibrant for me we're going to drop the saturation a little bit we still want to look like we still want this flower to look like it belongs there and I'm gonna increase the brightness just a hair okay I'm gonna hit okay now the background obviously looks terrible so we're gonna change that right now up here you can see that I have an adjustment layer here on my layers palette just above my background layer now if I hit the little eye icon to the left you can see that my image returns to normal that's because I've shut off this adjustment layer I'm gonna turn it back on though and you can see an adjustment layer gives you a mask so I'm going to click on the mask and I'm going to hit control or command I. Now what that's going to do is invert the color on the mask, essentially making the mask black. And if you know a thing or two about masks, I've got an entire video on masks. You can go check it out. Black covers up in masks. So having this mask filled with black is just the same as having this layer shut off entirely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the mask and I'm going to set white as my foreground color and I'm going to grab a brush. Let me set white. There we go. White is the foreground color. I'm going to grab a brush here, make it a tad bit bigger. I'm just using my bracket keys here to enlarge my brush tip. I am now going to paint over the flower. You're going to see as I paint white, it is making the flower pink. I'm just going to kind of rough it in here and then I will pause this recording and finish it up so you don't have to watch me sit here and play with this as I try to fine tune it. But all I'm going to do is cut it in okay I'm gonna pause it now I'll be back in a split second okay so here we are I have finished masking the flower out and you can see the entire thing is now this pink now seeing it contrasting on that green background it really doesn't look too realistic it's way too pink so the beauty of this masking and adjustment layer is it is very very editable I can just double click on my adjustment layer here and my hue saturation pops back up and in this case I want to desaturate the flower a little more and I want to take away that little bit of brightness I gave it a little bit of the brightness I gave it at least and right there now the flower looks like it's kind of fitting and yeah okay I can see how you could have taken that photo so there's one way to realistically change the color of an object in a photo and that way is probably the most versatile as far as being flexible and allowing you to go back and make changes later and everything's masked here so I could easily just fill that all with black and be back to just my original image or I could just shut off the adjustment layer so there's a ton of possibilities there so that's the first way we're going to look at 
The second way, here I'm going to bring up this image of this car. This way is a very cool way to do it as well. Um, basically, we're going to use blend modes instead of adjustment layers to change the color of this car. So it's a very interesting way to do it, and some of you may not know about this. We're going to change the color of this car to blue. And the first step to doing that is going to be creating a new layer. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to grab my brush tool. And I'm actually going to zoom in just a touch here. Oops, didn't want to do that. There we go. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here. And I'm going to start painting the blue that I want over the car. So I'm going to grab my color picker. I'm just going to get make this a light sky or baby blue here and I'm just gonna start painting all over the car body and again here I'm gonna pause as I finish painting so you don't have to sit here and watch me paint so I'll be back in a split second okay and as you can see here I've got a pretty rough painting over here of this car but that's fine because it will all look good in just a second I have all this blue on its own layer here and now it comes time to change the blending mode to make this change the color of the car. We're going to use this blending mode down here called Hue. And what the Hue blending mode does is it makes these pixels on this layer affect only the hue of the layer beneath it. Okay? So this is not going to change the lighting on the car. This isn't going to make the car solid blue. It's only going to it's going to take all that red hue and replace it with this light blue hue. You're going to see what it's going to do when I click this. Okay? You can now see that the Camaro is this light blue. And it's also slightly desaturated, but that's fine. If you would like it more saturated, we can just select that layer, hit Command or Control U, and this brings up the hue saturation dialog. We can increase the saturation. Okay? We can increase the brightness if we like. And hit OK. And you can see that's all it is. It's that light blue and we've changed the color of the car. And it's pretty quick and pretty easy. And uh, that's one way that's really cool to uh, change the color of stuff. I love it. It's just quick. You paint your color on, you hit change the hue, and you can mess around with the colors a little bit. And that's that easy way. So that's how you can change the color of objects and photos. Some photos work better doing it this way. Some work better using the other method of the adjustment layer. You just have to play around and uh, kind of get a feel for it. All right, so we are going to go on here and learn about coloring some black and white photos. We're going to color this black and white photo here in just a second. But one thing I would like to point out before we move on is let me create a new layer. I'm going to shut off that blue layer. I'm going to switch my foreground to a bright yellow. Instead of changing the blend mode of the layer, we can actually change the blend mode of the brush to hue. And now you're going to see when I paint with this yellow here on the side of the car, I enlarge my brush. Or excuse me, not on a new layer. Get rid of the new layer. You have to do it on the original layer. So you have to duplicate the original layer. So I'm going to use Command or Control J. And now as I paint over this original layer, you're going to see it is just changing the color of the car. So there are a couple ways here you can use the brush to alter the color of an object. Obviously, I don't really like using the just switching the blend mode right here in the brush because you have to create an entirely new layer for your image. Just doing it this way and converting the layer using a blend mode is much easier because you have more options as far as going back later on and editing. So of course I like that option better than using the brush tool. But I just thought I would point that out. Okay, so let's get into that black and white. I'm going to close this image here. And I am going to open up this image here of this woman. Increase to full size. And we are going to colorize this woman here in this photo. Now, I'm starting with this woman, or this picture of this woman, and I am also starting with two other images, and that is this picture, an up close picture of some hair. So I get some nice brown tones for when it comes time to color the hair. And also this skin tone photo here of some skin tones. And we will use that as well so we can get an accurate skin color for her face. So the first thing we have to do here is create a new layer. And actually, before we can even start painting with any color, we have to convert this photo. You can see up here in the toolbar, it says gray. 
that means that the photo color space is grayscale, which means it's not going to give us any color at all. So we need to come down here and switch that to RGB color. I went into image, mode, RGB color. Okay, and it's going to ask me if I want to flatten the layers. I'm going to say don't flatten in this case just because there's nothing on that layer right now. Okay, I'm going to bring up the skin tones image and I'm going to grab my eyedropper. Now, in my eyedropper toolbar, I'm going to make sure my sample size is set to 5 by 5 average. Just gives you more accurate color when you're using your eyedropper. I'm going to select a lighter skin tone here, like that. I'm just going to minimize this image. Now, on this layer, I am once again going to grab my brush and I'm just going to paint over all of the skin here that's visible. All of the skin except I want to make sure I don't get onto her hair and I'm going to stay away from her nostrils, her lips, eyelashes, and her eyebrows. So I'm going to pause it yet again and I'm going to finish painting around her and then I will show you what it looks like and then I'll show you what to do to actually colorize it. Okay, there all the skin on her face is covered up. You can see except her nostrils here, which actually I'm going to paint into that nostril a little bit there. And her hair, obviously, I haven't covered up. And her eyelashes and eyebrows I've also left uncovered. But her ear, you can see, is completely covered. And I've done this all on a separate layer. It's very important that you do it on a separate layer. Because, again, we're going to come into our layer blend modes. And instead of choosing hue, because there's no hue here to change, it's all black and white, we're going to select color. And you can see that it has given her a nice skin tone here. The only thing I don't like about it is it is a hair too saturated. So I'm going to hit Command or Control U to bring up my hue saturation dialog box. And I'm going to desaturate it just a little bit. Just like that. That looks a little more natural. Now, obviously, it doesn't particularly look proper with her having this gray hair and gray eyebrows and gray lips. So we're going to change that as well. We're going to create a new layer, and we're going to tackle the eyebrows and the eyelashes first. We're going to do them both on the same layer. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to grab a... Actually, I'm going to grab the eyedropper first because I'm going to bring up the hair image. And I'm going to pick a lighter brown here, just kind of like that. And I'm going to grab the brush tool again. And I'm going to increase the, my brush size using my bracket tools. I'm just going to paint over her eyebrows and her eyelashes. Just like that. And I'm going to switch the blend mode to color. And that's much too saturated, so I'm going to bring up the hue saturation dialog box here. Adjustments, hue saturation. And I'm going to lower the saturation. In fact, I'm going to make them a bit darker. I've got to increase the saturation there if we're going to make it darker. And hit OK. And there we go. We've changed the color of her eyebrows as well. Now we're going to do the lips on their own layer. For this, I don't have a reference image, so I'm going to come up here to reds, and I'm going to pick a light, desaturated red. And grab my brush tool again. And paint right over them. And switch that blend mode to color. Okay, and you can see it's converted the color of her lips to red. Now the only thing left to do is the hair. I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to pause it again and I'm going to color all of her hair. For this though, I'm going to use my eyedropper and I'm going to pick up one of these darker browns. Something like that. By the way, I should be showing you the hexadecimal codes. This is 895240. It's a nice dark brown. And I've created a new layer here. Matter of fact, I'll name this layer hair and I will name this layer lips just so I can come back to them later. And I'm going to name this one Brows. And this one on the bottom here, Skin. Just like that. Now I'm going to come up to the hair layer and I will just use my brush and I will begin painting in. And I'm going to pause it and I'll be back in a minute and you'll be able to see what the finished product looks like. Alrighty, and here you see we have the hair pretty well covered up. If I close off the rest of these layers, you can see that we've got the hair here. And there's the original layer. And now with the hair, I'm going to switch that to color as well. And you can see it colors the hair nice and brown. And just like that, we have colorized this digital black and white. Um, we haven't colorized the sky, but you know that'd be a simple matter of whoops, coming up to here and selecting a blue. And again, we could we could actually just switch it to the blend mode color before we even start painting. 
and we could paint over it. That doesn't look too good though. And we'd have to play around with that to get a good match. Actually, what I would probably do is make a selection of the sky and use hue saturation, colorize under hue saturation, and mess with the sky. But we're not going to worry about that in this video tutorial. That's enough for now. This one's been a little bit of a long one. Um, so that's how you colorize black and white. And that is also how you take care of colorizing individual objects in a photo and keeping it all looking realistic. And that's really it. That's it for this one. And I hope you've learned something. I hope you've enjoyed it. And I hope you go check out the site. That is www.tutvid.com. Thank you for watching.